Hello, my name is Dr. Bridget Sterling, and I'm here with Lisa and Andy Moore, and we're going to be discussing today some of the important questions that church leaders have about COVID-19, the pandemic, and quite honestly, to find out when is this thing going to end? Right. <laughs> So I met uh, Lisa and Andy um, some time ago, but we really got talking about the epidemic about a year ago now. And we started mm -hmm. thinking about what we could do to prepare for what was coming. And this, this epidemic um, is unusual for this part of the world, but uh, because I've had some experience with um, pandemics in the past, this wasn't too much of a surprise for me. Um, but yeah, my background is I'm an epidemiologist and so I have uh, training specifically in public health and controlling epidemics. And I also have been many years a uh, believer in Jesus and somebody who has been very active in the church and in missions as well. So I have a real passion for the church. Good. Yeah, well, Bridget, thank you for uh, this exchange. I think it's going to be very helpful. Um, Lisa and I are pastors uh, in Victoria and uh, Pastor Glad Tidings Church. And so we come today with a heart for the church and we come as pastors and we're just so grateful to be able to kind of ask you some questions and get some response from you and hopefully um, uh, learn a little bit and even maybe have some new tools to deal with what we, what we are now enduring, this pandemic. And so um, we have a number of questions that have to do with, with COVID-19 and the pandemic, but um, probably important for people to know that um, I, I myself experienced um, the infection of the virus and ended up uh, quite sick for a number of weeks and had a quarantine in the basement, away from the family, really hopeful that no one else would get it. And uh, I was sick like I haven't been sick before. I had terrible fever. Um, uh, it was awful. And, and so uh, I don't really want anybody to ever get that. And again, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm in my mid 40s. Um, I'm extremely active. No, yes. well, at least anyway, I'm active. And, 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 and so I consider, you know, the thoughts about those who are part of our church congregation who are older and mm -hmm. those in our community, of course, who are very vulnerable. And so I think it's a, a really important conversation. It's real. This virus is real. Yeah. No one's making it up. It's out there and it does, it does really affect us. So if it's okay, I'll just I'll just start with a, a you know maybe a question that'll just give you some space to share with us, and that mm -hmm. is, uh, were you surprised uh, by this epidemic? Yeah, well, thank you. That's a really good question, actually, because I started talking about this epidemic back in January of 2020, and to try and encourage people um, to be preparing, to be thinking forward, and to be aware without you know, running around like causing anxiety or being chicken little or yeah. anything like that, you know, right. putting it in perspective, but recognizing that this was going to be a problem. Um, I had been working in Saudi Arabia during the MERS outbreak there and had been advising the government as to how to respond to that coronavirus. So when this one came along, we felt like it might be fairly similar. Uh, mm. We were happy that it was not as deadly as MERS was, okay. um, but we were we were not uh, happy by how transmissible it was. Mm. And your experience that you shared, Andy, is really important and it, it, it helps to understand, me to understand why you and Lisa were so incredible when I actually came to you and said, I'd love to help you with this. <laughs> and is there anything that, that I can do to help? And you were like, come on down, take a tour. Like, mm. come, yeah, here's our plan. And, right. and you guys were really open about that. So I really appreciate that mm. you were um, people who really want to do what's best Mm -hmm. for your congregation and for your family and for, for all the people that you come into contact with. Yeah, so I wasn't surprised by the <laughs> epidemic because <laughs> it, it, it was something that I had experienced already before. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what I guess I have been surprised about is how widespread because of the incredible transmission that we've had. That, that yeah. is a bit of a surprise, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been shocking to see the world so uh, touched and transformed by this this same enemy, if you will, mm -hmm. that's out yeah. there, in mm -hmm. invisible. Yes, yeah. yeah, very much so. Yeah, well, I have to laugh with that question because 
I do remember last January 2020, you asking us, hey, would you like me to help you formulate a response to COVID-19? And, <laughs> and we were like, what? Yeah. What do you mean? That, yeah. that thing that's happening in China? That's what does that have else. to do with us? Yeah, right. <laughs> so right. you knew what was about to happen. Exactly. We did not. And we're thankful to have experts to help guide us in a time that's very unknown for us still. And so we're at a different point of the conversation now. Vaccines are yeah. top of mind right. and rolling out and a um, lot, of, lot of talk about all the different aspects of that. So can you talk to us a little bit about the vaccine, about what, what this means and what that looks like? Sure. I mean, what an exciting time in history hmm. that we could have had a vaccine developed at such breakneck speed. Hmm. Wow. You know, I've been working in, in HIV field for many, mm. many years. Mm -hmm. I worked in Africa for many years, and we were sort of devastated by the epidemic. Um, even after we had antiretrovirals, we, we didn't get a vaccine. Mm. And I worked on lots of teams that were trying to get a vaccine and working towards this, and we just failed and, and not been able to. But some of that work that went into that actually has enabled us to have the ability uh, to prepare a vaccine for this epidemic. And wow. so God is good I, I mm. look for a time such as this, mm. yeah, that we actually have that technology. So, so I can see like a divine time in this mm. that they, you know, so I love the vaccine. Uh, it speaks to, to what humans can do when they do get together and, right. and decide what's important and focus on it with, with God's yeah. blessing. Mm -hmm. um, it is a different vaccine than we're used to. Hmm. So we've had vaccines since the 1700s, right? We've had, We've had the ability to either variolate or vaccinate people mm -hmm. for many, many uh, years, but this is a little different because it does have a bit of a, a genetic component. So until we were able to work on a genetic cellular level, we weren't able to have a vaccine like this. So you think about all the fields of work that have gone into this and all the thought and the processes that have. One of the concerns people have with this vaccine is they're a little worried that it happened so quickly. Mm. But what people should know is that it didn't happen, they didn't skip any steps. Hmm. Instead, what they did was they took all the steps and they started them simultaneously. Okay. So the governments of the world get permission for scientists to do all the things we don't normally do one at a time hmm. at the same time. Hmm. So there are several phases that we have in vaccine trials. Yeah. All the phases were ran at the same time. Okay. Hmm. So then they could go back. That's why you might have heard some of the vaccines. They said, well, we're not sure how many doses or how many days or how much. That's, that is some of the things that they have to figure out by time. Right. I see. But they can say that they're in doing it this way and this way and this way, that we can see what kind of immune response we have, how effective it is, and whether or not there's adverse events, some negative problems that come yeah. from it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So this is a good thing. The rollout of this vaccine is going <laughs> to going to help us. Yes, yeah. very encouraging. And it's going to help us to start to look back and get into um, some of our normal life. Mm. The other and perhaps more important thing is that it's going to stop a lot of the transmission. Mm. So when we have a lot of transmission, we have a lot of mutations. And when we have a lot of mutations, we get variants. And so the less transmission we have, mm. the less variants we have. I see. So some people will say, well, just let it go. You know, why don't we just, you know, we can get herd immunity. We've all heard about herd yeah. immunity. Mm -hmm. Let's just let it go and we'll be, you know, like Sweden and we'll just have this herd immunity. Right. Unfortunately, we'll end up with a different virus at the end of the day because every time a virus moves from one person to another, it changes. Okay. Mm. So the virus that Andy would have had back in March, March yeah, yeah. That, that virus doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. That virus isn't okay. circulating anywhere. Right. It's a different virus now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So can you talk to us a little bit about like point of care testing and mm -hmm. the value of that and what that might do to change the way we live in this virus season? Yeah. In the same way that God has determined that vaccines would come out with these new advances at this time, mm. point of care testing has come out at this very time. Mm. So even in the world of HIV, where we've been trying to get like um, oral like spit tests for mm. HIV for years and years and years, they've only just really been approved. Mm. Wow. And so, you know, we're, we're so excited to say, oh, wow, you know, we, we're going to have these COVID tests. We're going to have any tests that work this way. Mm. Even PCR, which is talked about all the time, is as if it was, you know, something that we've always had, is actually relatively new. Mm. Okay. So the ability to test is incredibly new. Mm -hmm. Now, the ability to test 
at a particular point outside of a lab, outside of a hospital, mm. is even newer. Hmm. So what we're really encouraged by and excited about are like little handheld machines that you can actually say spit into or put some um, nasal exudate into and actually push a button and find out if you have, if you're shedding virus. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you, you do or don't have an infection. Mm -hmm. It means you're currently not infectious. So for example, if we had one of these machines here and the three of us all spat into the machine and we got negative tests, we could take off our masks. Right. Mm. It doesn't mean we don't have the virus. It means we're not shedding the virus. Okay. Okay. And so then it would be safe for us, at least for a small period of time, yeah. to mm -hmm. sit together. Mm -hmm. I can see this in the church. Yes. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. that could yeah. change everything for, Absolutely. for gatherings. I mean, we're, the challenge for us is we're about a gathering, right? This that's is not it. all we do, but that's primary to what we do. Yeah. And so if we can use something like this to affect being able to gather again, then that's going to change everything. Yes. Right. Back in 2013, um, my colleagues and I actually wrote to airlines, governments, and in response to both the Ebola outbreaks and the MERS outbreak, we made a suggestion that there needs to be some funding resources focus in point of care testing. Mm because we thought this would be an, a phenomenal thing to have in airplanes. Yes. Now at the time we didn't have the technology to look for a new virus, but we said we could actually look for old viruses mm. and rule out that this isn't flu, this isn't right. you know, a simple coronavirus, this isn't RSV, so we know this must be something scary. <laughs> mm. right, so at the right. time we thought that would be a good idea. Now we actually have the technology to be able to say, this is what you have. Mm. One yeah. of the things that's holding people back, so we do have some um, tests that have been approved, is uh, sometimes they take a little longer than we'd like, maybe about 40 minutes to okay. get the results. Okay. And sometimes they're a bit more expensive than we'd like. But those things are both coming yeah. down over time. So you just, you got to come to church early. <laughs> yeah, right. Bring your money. Yeah, come in 40 <laughs> minutes early and yeah. get your test. Or That's a time right, might yeah. be where you're going to have to take it at home. And then you're going to have to have it on your phone. And as okay. you walk through the door, you'll be like, look at I'm me. I'm good. Green light. <laughs> green light. Yeah. Well, Interesting. That's what gets us back. We'll do it. <laughs> yeah, totally. We'll do it. That's great. Well, mm -hmm. you know, so speaking specifically of churches, the, you know, we all have methods and rhythms of how we do things. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that are quite sacred and, and some that are just um, cultural that we do. And so we've identified, even as you've been helping us, certain things that are risky, that activities that churches usually participate in. And so let's talk a little bit about that. Some of the things we need to be aware of as we come out of this, the mm -hmm. things that may have to shift or we may need to just be thinking about differently. Yeah, for sure. In the beginning of the epidemic, we were really thinking about what we touch. There was a lot of focus on right. hand washing, yes. hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes yeah. everywhere, doing all washing of that. Washing your groceries. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Everyone was spraying everything yeah. down. Mm -hmm. and, you mm -hmm. know, so that was, that was uh, important and it is a good thing to do. It probably is only responsible for less than 10% of all transmission though. Okay. Because what really is important is how this virus is spread in droplets and how it's spread in aerosolization. Mm -hmm. So when we wear a mask, we're protecting each other mm. from droplets. Mm. And actually, even the fact that I'm not wearing any kind of eye covering, Lisa and I are not wearing mm -hmm. eye covering, Andy, you're protected, you're fine. <laughs> Um, but the droplets can actually land in your eyes. Hmm. Hmm. And you have the receptor cells in your eyes that can receive the virus. So, so one of the things we could do is actually wear some kind of eye covering if we thought we were going to be closer to each other. Hmm. Um, and then, of course, the mask is going to protect, not so much protect me from you, but more so protect you from me. Right. Uh, and that's why we wear masks. Some people are asking about double masks now. Should mm. we wear two masks? Mm -hmm. Should I be wearing a paper mask with a cloth mask on mm. top? Uh, the U.S. government has recommended that. So the mm. CS, CDC has recommended it. And other countries are waiting to see what the results are in their studies. So we're not, there's sort of a question mark about that. Okay. It's not a bad idea. Mm. You know, it's not like it's a terrible idea to do it. It yeah. might make it harder for people to breathe. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that would, that's why people might kind of wait to see what the results are of, of government recommendations for that. But all this to say that when I'm talking and when I'm breathing... Um, when I'm cheering, hmm. when I'm singing, singing, singing right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I can aerosolize those mm -hmm. droplets. So no longer are we talking about just the normal speaking. If I'm just normally speaking, most of the time the droplets are of a size that they will fall, if I'm not wearing a mask, within a meter. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. So about one meter distance from me, all those droplets are going to fall. And so that's why we were worried about things on the surface and then rubbing our eyes and yeah. that sort of thing. But the problem is, is that if I am being exuberant, so if I'm exercising at the gym or if I'm cheering or something like that, it actually, there's more force. Mm. And the more force that the droplets have, the more likely they are to uh, be propelled. And as they propel, they dry. And as they dry, they kind of sit on the surface. So we've all been in a movie theater and we've looked up at the, at the stream of light and we can see all the dust particles. Mm -hmm. So in the same way that there are dust particles in all of the air that we have around us, yeah. the little viruses can sit on that. Hmm. And they can sit for a, a significant period of time. Now the question is, even though they're sitting in that significant period of time, they can kind of go around in these little clouds of virus, <laughs> they might be raining down as mm. well, right? So we're gonna have the virus spreading in the air. And mm. we call that aerosolization of the mm. virus. Right. And that's what we don't love. Yes. Yeah. The very first, probably the, the virus that you got, would have been much less likely to transmit this way. Hmm. Over time, as the virus has become, um, has mutated, it's actually become more transmissible and more able, it's kind of higher up, more able to spread both because it's more likely to spread by droplets and aerosolization. But also then when it does land on your eye or wherever it lands, the hook, the little spike protein that it has is much more likely to adhere to the receptors. So unfortunately over time, the viruses that are not very good at transmitting, hmm. stop transmitting. Mm -hmm. right. And the viruses that are really good at transmitting, transmit Keep more. Going. I yes. see, yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So churches, you know, singing obviously is pretty central to what we do. We've talked yeah. a lot about this, but yeah. it's, Absolutely. it's something we, we need to consider. We need to think about distance, about masks, about, you know, maybe shields, distance from the platform, from yes. the, the band and yeah. spacing people out. I mean, there's, there's things we've been doing already, Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. but there's, we're going to have to continue to be creative probably. So what do we have to be thoughtful about in a church that we don't have to worry about at a grocery store or that we don't have to worry about uh, at a tourist place or anything yeah. like that? If I look around our city here, you know, we can see that there are touristy places open. Mm -hmm. Rock climbing walls are open. Virtual reality rooms are open. Mm. I mean, these are places where yeah. people are sharing things and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me that why are the churches not allowed to have people when these things are? The right. only point where I can see where there would be any kind of an argument is around singing. Okay. Mm. Because we're gonna touch things, yeah, that's true, but they're gonna touch things in a grocery store or at a yeah. virtual reality room. Mm -hmm. Right. But when we sing, we absolutely propel the virus. So we know that that's true. And so we know that that's more risky behavior. Mm -hmm. So with the absence of vac mass vaccination and point of care testing, how do we then join together, gather together, be in each other's presence so we can worship the Lord together mm -hmm. and still be safe? Is singing going to be a part of that for a while or is that something we're going to kind of back off of? Are we going to have more distance? Um, the other thing might be any, any wind instruments could mm. also potentially be another way that, that uh, yeah. viruses are aerosolized. So just to be very thoughtful about that. Right. Remember too that it's about the, the, the virus transmission is not just about the amount of virus or the method of transmission. It's about time. It's how much time are we in each other's presence too. Mm, okay. So the longer that we're in a room where there has been singing, for example, the more likely that there would be transmission. Okay. So, so even brief, shorter services. Even brief, uh, times of uh, singing or even brief times of, of uh, gathering yeah. uh, lessen the potential for infection. They would. Mm. And certainly having barriers up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a barrier in front of the drum that you could yeah. have. You yeah. could have a barrier in front of the singers. Mm -hmm. You could have people face the walls. You could have people hum. You could ask people not to be so exuberant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, like there, there have been times when we've been in a stadium, right? And we've all cheered at the same time. Somebody mm -hmm. scores a goal, we all cheer. Imagine mm. the viruses <laughs> and the bacteria that went out into that room. We never thought about We're that. We're never before. gonna no. be the same again, Bridget. We no. never <laughs> thought about That's that. That's right. But the thing is that now that we have this pandemic, and it's for such a short time, <laughs> it's for such a short time, mm. that maybe some of the things we do will be a little different. Mm. Yeah. I remember I went on a mission to Cuba one time, and the people there don't clap. 
because of course they had to be very quiet when they were worshiping God in their home churches or underground churches. Mm. So instead of clapping, they do this. Right. They don't have to do that anymore, right? So it's now legal to be yeah. a Christian. It's legal to worship God in Cuba. They still do this. It's become part of their culture. It's become yeah. part of their culture. And I think, you know, well, you know what? There's experiences that we have that change viscerally deep within us mm. how we do business. And I wonder if there's some way we can think of that will be even more <laughs> honoring to God. Maybe that's something we need to be praying for. Yeah. Right. God, how can we, how can we honor you? Because yeah. mm -hmm. we want to sing mm -hmm. to you. Yeah. We yes. are desperate to sing to you. How can I do that, though, in a way that, you know, is honoring to God and is using wisdom? Yeah. Just right. like the, the Cubans using mm. their wisdom. Yeah. Very good. So wisdom in that and just wrapping up that conversation, I think we've talked to you about layers of protection. So it's yeah. not there's not just one thing that everyone's going to have to do. It's it's about distance and about sanitizing and about yes. masks and about barriers. And so you create all of these and they add levels of protection and that and keep the service shorter. And so there's lots of different things we can do as different churches um, have different preferences and styles yeah. that are going to help protect you, adding layers of protection. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's yeah. always going to be risk. Yes. So we're not trying right. to eliminate risk. We're right. trying to say, how can we be wise? Yes. What wisdom right. can we use mm -hmm. to worship God, to be together, to honor yeah. him, at the same time, honoring life, yes. and honoring health, honoring yes. wellness, and modeling that for the community. Because I think when people you know, in the community see mm -hmm. that we are people who are representing health and wellness and goodness, yeah. honoring God and honoring authority, yeah. mm -hmm. then they're going to, they're going to, th that will be apparent. It right. feels safe. Yeah. yeah. We want well, people to feel safe when they come right. to our church. And that's, <laughs> that was actually part of the vision of what we're doing together here is because mm -hmm. wouldn't it be amazing if the rhetoric out there was that the churches are the safest place right. yes. around. <laughs> like they take so much care. They're so yeah. responsible. Yeah. They're so committed to their community and to one another that they do everything that they can to make it a good experience mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. many. And I think that's a win, right? So yeah. that's part of what we're talking about. And, yes. you know, Bridget, if I can ask you, uh, if I, you said you only get one question, <laughs> like you can ask me one question, I'm a busy lady, it's a pandemic and I'm an epidemiologist. So if you said to me, Andy, just give me one question, this would be the one. And it's the question that, you know, comes to me in a number of different ways with when is the church going to open and all this, mm -hmm. and, you know, when are we going to get back to in-person services and when are we going to grow back to our full size? The big question is when will this epidemic end? Mm -hmm. That's what everybody wants to know. So you've been <laughs> holding your breath watching until now. <laughs> So here it is. Tell us, when is it over? Okay. I wish I could give you a date. Yeah, right. <laughs> we do too. But the truth of the matter is, from my knowledge of epidemics, from what I've seen in the past, when we have at first something new, it's very scary. You know, people kind of run, they hide, they mm -hmm. get excited about it. When we look back to the HIV epidemic. In the very beginning, we didn't know how you could get it. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a test. Mm -hmm. We didn't have any treatment. Mm -hmm. It was very scary. Mm -hmm. We saw it roll out in North America. We saw it then go to Europe. We saw it all over Africa, India. It was rolling out all over the place, and it was extremely frightening. Mm -hmm. Over time, we've learned how you get the virus, mm -hmm. how you don't get the virus. Yeah. We have put changed lifestyles around how not to get that virus. Mm -hmm. We have made sure that people are educated, they understand. We right. have worked on stigma reduction. We have created uh, good, good treatments that mm. people can have to make it less frightening. Mm -hmm. um, and so over time, we have learned to be with that virus in a way that it is actually now not very frightening. Mm. So, and, and please God, let us get a vaccine. Yeah. But right. in, in the future, I'm sure we will. But the point being with COVID, it's really similar. Mm. So we've had coronaviruses forever. Okay. There was a coronavirus that passed over from cows and between cows and humans in the late 1800s mm. that we still have in cows. It just doesn't affect humans as much anymore. Okay. Wow. So we have these viruses. We learn to live with them. And before we had mass media and mass travel and all of this, mm -hmm. we, we didn't know about it. Yeah. Mm. So thank you, God, that now that we know about it, we also have the ability and the technology and the wisdom to be able to respond to it. So in my estimation, this is going to be something that we're going to get better and better and better at dealing with. And we're not gonna have the same things that we had before. It's not gonna be the same as it was. Right. 
I hope it's better. Mm -hmm. I actually hope that there, that we take hold of the opportunities that are coming at us and that we, we actually can make this a good thing. Mm. One of the things I'm hoping that churches will do is to get together over it. Mm. Um, I'm using the forum that we have on the ARC tool mm -hmm. to try and bring churches together to right. say, what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. Share Supporting ideas. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I was just, I was mentioning to Lisa earlier, we had a really interesting idea come forward about a, yeah. a family day activity. And I'm like, oh, this is great. Now, I don't think every church in the world needs to do the same activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the fact that this one church thought about this, they planned this activity, they're really proud of it, and they put it out there for all the other churches mm -hmm. to look at and think about and maybe do, and maybe they won't do it for family day. Maybe they'll do something similar for Easter. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe they'll do something. But the, it really made the church in that community stand out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People were like, what are they doing? What's That's going great. on? And mm -hmm. they did it in a safe way. They were like healthy. They That's were great. making sure they were honoring That's to the great. authorities. But at the same time, they were like showing and shining. Mm. So I think, I think that's one thing. I'm hoping that the churches really decide to get together right. over yeah. this. So good. Oh, mm -hmm. that's really good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think that what a, what a great, great conversation to have. I'm sure that just like us, it's been such a learning curve. But, mm -hmm. you know, just to all of the the pastors and church leaders that would see this video, we just want you to know that uh, our hearts are with you and that we do really believe that the church doesn't have to kind of be the, the end of the bus. You know, we can, we can be a part of the solution. We can be a part of, of good practice that's going to bring health. And, and we do really believe together that there will be a time when we are reopened and there's life everywhere again and mm -hmm. Bridget thank you for telling us that it, it is only for a short time it feels like so long right now yeah <laughs> but we know that uh, that we'll get we'll get through this and we'll get through this together and so let's continue to pray and lead well yeah thank you thank awesome. you thanks guys appreciate it